Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, crime, I, I'm going to do a review of one of the bleakest crime novels I've ever read, He Died With His Eyes Open by Derek Raymond. I kind of feel like I've been neglecting crime in my Thursday review slots. I just looked back through my videos and the last crime novel I reviewed on a Thursday, um, apart from Garborga stuff, where there's been some kind of slightly crimey stuff, um, was The Postman Always Rings Twice, which was in April. Um, so I have been, I've definitely been neglecting crime, but this is definitely a, um, a good book to make a return to talking about crime fiction on the channel. Um, so this was just absolutely phenomenal. So this is a book that was recommended to me by three different people, all of whose opinions um, I really, really respect. Um, so I had to buy it. And it was one of the first books I bought when I finished my 100 book challenge, in fact. Um, so it was recommended by Juan at Plague by Visions, uh, by Duncan McCurdy, uh, another booktuber, and by um, Philip Nicholson, who's a subscriber, who all said that Derek Raymond is just fantastic. And he's, he's a writer I'd not really heard of. Um, although I do remember a couple of, within the last year or so, I think, I got this book out of the library um, and then never actually read it. For, you know, I just didn't get to it and it ended up having to go back. Um, I wish I had that because it's phenomenal. But anyway, at least, I, at least I've read it now. Um, so this is the first in a series of books that Derek Raymond wrote. Um, I think there's five in the series called the Factory Series, which are all about this um, police station in uh, in London. Um, so this one came out in uh, 1984. Um, Derek Raymond's real name was Robin Cook, and he did publish some other books under that name um, earlier on, more kind of autobiographical stuff rather than crime fiction, um, but then used the, the pseudonym Derek Raymond for these books because he didn't want to be mistaken for... Um, the uh, the trashy writer of medical thrillers, Robin Cook, who wrote Coma, I think is probably his most famous book. Um, and also there was a, a well-known um, British politician called Robin Cook at the time, who I think I was probably was probably health secretary um, at the time Derek Raymond was writing. Um, so he didn't want to be mistaken for either of those, so he came up with the name of Derek Raymond. He lived a an interesting life um, in that he came from, you know, reasonably... Um, well to do, a uh, reasonably well to do family, and I think was, you know, went to kind of public school and things like that, and then kind of dropped out and spent a lot of time bobbing around Europe doing various things, and then living in London, getting involved in various kind of low level crime and things like that. Um, but yeah, also writing, and this, this is just a staggeringly good book. Um, I've got the rest of the books um, in the series, um, and I'm definitely going to be reading them soon. In fact, I think. Uh, the second book in the in the series will probably be the next one um, that I read. So let me tell you about the, uh, give you an, an idea of the plot. I, won't, I never go into plot too much um, in these reviews, but let me give you a sense of what it's about. So there's an unnamed detective, a detective sergeant who's at the you know the centre of the book, uh, and the book is is written from his perspective. So he's investigating the death of a of a middle aged man who's been found beaten to death, and they find in this guy's belongings loads of tapes. So as you can see on the cover, there's a there's a cassette recorder. Young, younger people in the audience may not remember tapes, um, but yeah, they certainly in the eighties they were a big deal. Um, so yeah, so there's this there's all these tapes where he's just been recording his thoughts, um, and like Derek Raymond, this the the dead character, and I do wonder if there are some deliberate similarities here, um, is a writer who's lived in, uh, lived in France for um, a long period of time and then come back to the UK. Um, he's an alcoholic and he's just, you know, his life just sounds desperately awful. Um, and the, this, this unnamed detective character gets to know more and more about the character by listening to these tapes um, as he's investigating, um, investigating the murder. So a, a large portion of the book is told from the perspective of the victim um, via like transcripts of, the, of these tapes. Um, and the detective, meanwhile, is kind of going round very, you know, rough, run-down parts of, of London, um, talking to various people who knew the victim, trying to get to the bottom of what happened. Um, and it's just, without giving too much away about the plot, it's difficult to describe quite how bleak it is. But the, the life, the... Well, the life the detective leaves to an extent is pretty horrific. Um, the life the, the, the dead man lived is incredibly horrific. 
um, you know, some of the characters that you meet through this book that the, that the detective interviews and that the, the victim was involved with are just the most amoral people you've you've ever come across, just completely devoid of any concern for 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 anyone else's existence. Um, but but credibly so, they do not feel like um, you know kind of paper thin monsters that have been conjured up by by Derek Raven. They feel like real people, and the victim you come to know as a real person as well. Uh, and he's so so desperate in his existence um, that it, it becomes you know depressing but moving as well. It's a it's a, a really quite an incredible book about the the depths of human sadness and desperation um, and the lengths that people will go to to try and find something to distract themselves from that. Um, so yeah, just just an enormously powerful book. So yeah, it's really a book about ob obsession and about this kind of awful, selfish evil that exists in some people um, and the way they, the way they pick you know, play with other people as, as, you know, kind of toys for their, for their own amusement. Um, yeah, just, I, I can't recommend this book highly enough, but, but go into it knowing that it's horrific in a way that, that few books are. Um, as I say, I'm, I'm, you know, really keen to read more books in this series because this was just staggeringly good. Um, and I can't, I, I hear that the books get worse in the sense, not that they get less good, but that they get more horrible. And I, I almost can't believe that. So I, I think it's the third book, I Was Dora, Dora Suarez, which is supposed to be the most horrific of all. But how how Derek Raymond managed to top this one, I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward in a, 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 a slightly scared way um, with finding out what he manages to, to do next. Um, so yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly recommended if you like dark crime. So, so Derek, Derek Raymond um, referred to these books as his black novels. Um, and, and that feels like an a utterly um, you know, apt term to, to use to describe them. They are, um, and, and I think he did that, you know, obviously he lived in France for a while, so he was certainly familiar with the term noir fiction. These are beyond noir. They are bleak in the way that something like Jim Thompson's books are but maybe even more so than that and I think partly maybe it's because being set in London in the 80s which is you know a place I know and a time I know albeit I was you know I was in my early teens then um, maybe that makes it a bit more real to me than um, Jim Thompson's books which which I think are filtered by our perception of Hollywood noir was, makes them feel a bit more distant, um, whereas this felt much closer to home for me um, and had a much bigger impact as a, as a result. But but also it feels just feels more real than the Jim Thompson's books. It's more convincing in a way. And I think Jim Thompson is a fantastic writer, um, but this feels, you know, it definitely feels like it's about real people. And I'm not sure Jim Thompson's books always do. I think they're fantastic, but they feel a bit arch um, in a way sometimes, whereas, whereas this doesn't. Uh, just beautifully written and a fantastic, fantastic book. Okay, time for another random book from the shelves. Today's book is The Deep by Nick Cutter, uh, which is another one I haven't got around to reading yet. I read The Troop by Cutter uh, a few months ago and did review it on the channel. I quite liked it. I didn't like it quite as much as I expected to. Um, but yeah, I am looking forward to reading this one. I do quite like stuff that takes place underwater, as this one does. I think it's in a research lab miles beneath the ocean surface. Uh, and it has a great reputation, this book. So, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to reading it. So, as always, thanks very much for watching. Let me know if you've read He Died With His Eyes Open and what you thought of it. Um, as I said, really looking forward to reading more stuff by Derek Raymond very, very soon. So expect to see more of him on the channel um, in the future. But, yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you're safe and well. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.